Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's great to see you. Today is already February the 4th, 2021. Can you believe it? Um, so last year I did a lot of interviews with heroes of mine from the music industry and I was so, so grateful and happy to be joined by Hi there, Tom my Lang. Name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube oh, channel. It's great. That's me. I was so happy to be joined by Tom Lang. It was a really cool interview and if you didn't see it, please go back and check it out later on. So he contacted me recently and he said he's been recording and has released a new EP. And I said, why don't you come back on my channel and play some songs and talk about the EP and hang out again. It was really fun last time and I've still got a bunch of questions that I want to ask him personally. And I'm sure some of you do as well. So thanks for joining us. If you have any questions as we go, please put them in the chat and we will address them at the end in our Q&A section. But for now, please welcome my good friend now, Tom Lang. How are you doing, Tom? And thank you for that that wonderful intro. Hero, I do my I've I do my best. I before. I only missed one thing, which was this. Tom Lang. <laughs> and in this corner, weighing in at a poultry. I think <laughs> I think we missed those round of applauses from our gigs. Actually, my gigs are more like this in real life. <laughs> my, my gigs are more like crickets. Bling, and then people are looking they look up from their phone and go what what happened <laughs> so tell me like uh, since we spoke last time that was an awesome interview by the way thanks for that uh, what what have you been up oh, to it since it was so much fun doing it thank you that was awesome yeah what, what have you been up to since uh, musically and personally oh my gosh staying busy certainly uh staying very very busy um i guess of late the, the, the most recent things I've been doing is uh, making videos with pals, um, doing what we call kooky COVID collaborations. Um, and yeah, I, I know that sort of minimizes the COVID thing, but I, you got to have fun. You got to get fun where you can get it, you know. Um, but yeah, making videos with friends. What they do is they film themselves on a phone and they send me an audio track that they record into a digital audio work, workstation at the same time. And I put it all together. You know those. You know those ones where they've got the Partridge Family kind of thing, where the bass player's on the top. And um, so doing a few of those, and th those are from songs from my uh, first two records. Um, and uh, those have been a lot of fun, and they've been really, you know, challenging. Learning video production on a laptop. Um, so I've been doing that, um, playing and singing, and also um, walking the dog. <laughs> That's fun. Riding my bike, that's fun. Hanging out with my wife uh, in the evening, watching Netflix. Um, oh, yeah, I recorded an, an EP, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm I tell you what, this is the truth. I'm not just saying this. Um, I'm, I am very honest on my channel. And I listen to the EP, and I really, 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 really love it. It's awesome. That was five reallys. I was just trying Take to create the, the, I was just trying to, you know, tease you to see what I was going to say after the reallys. But it's exactly what I love. It's, it's the kind of music I love. Classic songwriting, different styles, classic playing. I want to talk in detail later, if you don't mind, about the tracks. I've got some, some, some notes that I've written about the tracks, and we'll discuss that later on. Um, before we get started, let's go to the chat and, and say hi to our friends. Um, my good buddy Brad Bradstock is watching from the UK. How you doing, Brad? Good to see you here. We've got Patsy, hi, Brad. And, Patsy and Bernard also from the UK. Do you have a large following in England, Tom? Um, I have friends in England, and I've done a couple of things over there um, uh, for the in, in the in, in the industry, you know. Mm. But uh, I think it's it's really good for the people in UK because it's uh, it, what, what time is it there now? Is it is it nine o'clock at night? Nine. It's getting close to bedtime. Nine o'clock. Yeah. So you've got a nice glass of wine, and you got yeah. your friend Aaron, and you got this guy Tom Lang. Who you're about to learn more about, <laughs> so it's it's good to have people from UK. But we have Corazon from Yonkers, New York City. I'm in New York City as well. That's awesome. Corazon Pajaros. And Brad gave Pajares. you a virtual round of applause, which is uh, something we're getting used to now. Philip Watson. Oh, well, thank you so much. Says hello, Aaron and Tom. Um, where are you, Philip? Philip, where are you watching from? And Tom, where are you? Are you in Canada? Am I right? Do I remember correctly? Canada? What's that? Canada? Um, I am on the west coast of Canada. Yes, oh, I am. Oh, the west coast. So you're the above... The farthest you can get west in Canada. 
Oh, I didn't I didn't realize that. There's this little awesome. island at the end. Wow. Okay, right. Really, it's really curiously really cool. called Vancouver Island, but it's not Vancouver. Vancouver is the big city across the water. And my friend and yours now, Chris Decker. Hi, Aaron and Tom. Awesome. Hello, Chris. <laughs> oh, this is great. We've got a we've got a quorum. Philip Watson's in Texas. That's a place that I really, really, really want to go to sometime. I just love the thought of going there. I must go there one well, day. Well, here, here's a note about Texas. Guess where I graduated from high school? In Big D, in Dallas. Ah, ah so you have experience uh, with Texas. Awesome. Oh, darn right. Uh, I went there. I lived there for seven years or so. I gradu- I, I did my whole, all my high school years uh, in Dallas. And... You know, with a couple of beers in me, I start to I start to talk a bit. I get a little bit more Texas. Like I'm gonna tell you what, Bubba. <laughs> that's his um, that's his Texan accent. I won't well, try. It, I won't try it mine. Don't worry. From time to time, <laughs> <laughs> my dad so, even reamed me out one time when I came back. I came back to Canada, and we're you know having that chat after your trip. You know, and I'm all I'm all Texan. You know, and he says. <clears throat> Tom, um, please don't forget that you're a Canadian, okay? And I went, oh, gosh. Yeah, I guess I have to sort of learn how to relearn how to talk Canadian. Anyway, hi. Is that <laughs> Philip from Texas? Yeah, our good friend Philip Watson. And Roslyn is from upstate New York, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, I'm, 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 oh, my, great. my head is so full of your music today that I have to really think twice about everything. But let's talk about this EP, because one awesome thing that's happened, well, a good thing that's happened, 2020, 2021, for me personally, and I'm, I think you'll agree with me, is we have time. We have lots of time. As artists, of course, many artists are not working. It's a, it's a terrible time for most artists and people that work in the industry. But one thing, one thing I can say is, is, is a good thing, and I'm not belittling the whole thing, but one thing I've had is time to get back to music. And in the past, I was running around gig to gig. I, had, I didn't have time. I would be sleeping or gigging. Now I've had time to record and do, you know, do these streams and do things that I wasn't doing before. So yeah. am I right to say the same for you? I mean, you've made an EP. Is this, is this a new thing for you? What, what, what um, albums have you released prior to this one? Okay. Um, yeah, the EP was in process for the last four years or so. Um, these things take me ages to, to deliver because I play all the instruments and I agonize over the production and then I relay down the bass and I relay down the drums and so it takes a while. Um, so yeah, the, but further to your point about uh, you know having time to do all that stuff, I think we're gonna we're gonna experience this cultural explosion of art and uh, creativity from this. You know there are. There will be positive aspects to this, uh, where we sort of say, "Gosh, now we've had time to indulge in uh, our, our artistic pursuits, and um, we're going to see the, the the fruits of that as we go along." I mean, like they're happening now, and they'll be happening further on beyond that. But, and to your other question, yeah, I, I've got the EP is my third uh, sort of collection of tunes. Uh, I've got two full albums before this that have 11 songs on each and um they're the same thing they they took forever to record and write and produce and um i'm really really super proud of them and i and part of my promotional campaign for this ep is these videos i mentioned at the outset that are designed to just sort of say yeah here's the latest thing but here's these other songs that are kind of cool and I'd love mm. you to enjoy um, so the first album was called waiting for the big one um, which is about <laughs> an earthquake actually it, it's sort of equating an earthquake to love you know mm. uh, waiting for something is like waiting for the big one and it, and it was in, inspired by where we live we have earthquakes and uh, we my wife and I felt one is and it's it's deeply scary oh my god it's like I'm sure we're gonna die, and uh, so I wrote a song about that, and I made an album about that called "Waiting for the Big One." The next one is called "Supersonic," and uh, that's the title track. Well, those are both the title tracks of those albums. And "Supersonic" is about uh, thinking about how time passes quickly and how, uh, as the time remaining 
um, wears heavily on your mind, uh, you feel like you have to do more things more quickly. And so I'm living life supersonically, which is kind of cool. And the, the lyrics kind of reflect that. And then the third one uh, is called Well-Trained Mind. Uh, that's the EP, and that's also the title track. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a, the whole idea behind the name of Well-Trained Mind is, uh, you know, for all of us, in, in, in order to feel happiness, you have to force down the unhappiness or the or the little, the little guys on your shoulder that are saying, oh, that's not very good. That's not very good. You're not going to try and release that, are you? Um, mm. So if, if you're actively able to uh, think your way through to say, no, thank you very much, pal, but uh, I'm going to proceed with this. Or when something's driving you crazy, say it's 4 o'clock in the morning and you're awake, uh, there are mental techniques that you can use like uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you have to go, okay, well, that's a conversation going on in a room over there. And here I go. I'm shutting the soundproof door on that room. And, and in your mind, you're, you're, you're visualizing this thing. So it's, you know, works a good six times out of ten. <laughs> I know. But, I, but the something idea I, is... I face, it, I face that every day with making, even making oh, a video, God. you know, like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Something's not quite right. I cut myself shaving. Yeah. There's always a reason not to be creative. So it's nice oh, to hear God. you say that and relate to it. Yep. Especially lyrics. Mm. It's not just chord changes, but for me, lyrics are, I love writing lyrics. And I love hearing people say, "Gosh, that that song really spoke to me, Tom. Thank you." I mean, that's that's it's all what it's all for about for me. I don't want the money. I, I want. I'm not, I'm not getting any money, but uh, it's not about the money. It's about somebody saying, "Gosh, that lyric, it really touched me. You know, it, it felt really close." So, um, yeah. No, I'm I'm only in music for the money. Just so you know. Well, uh, obviously, uh, you've got a ways to go, pal. <laughs> No, I can see you're ordering guitars like crazy, so you must be making something somewhere. I know. Look, I got my three behind me, and I got my TC pedals as well. I got quite a collection. Oh, you there. do. I have. Quite, I told you, you, I have quite. I have quite a collection. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you about that later on. But um, no, I'm just. I'm just kidding, of course. I, the, the music thing for me has been amazing to get me through. I don't know what I would have done without the live streaming and the guitar and the music to take my mind off what's going on. I don't know what else I would have done. Watched even more Netflix, maybe. I don't Can know. you imagine? I mean, right. yeah. Anyway, the guitar, the guitar is such a, a solace. <laughs> let's brighten. Know? Let's brighten. The, I need to brighten the mood. Yeah. I would. I think yeah. actually. I think I'd like to pull this forward and get some music going. Can we have a song? Sure. Let's let's are try. You, are this. you ready? By the way, by the way, um, I'm going to play a song. I'm going to play two so two songs during this um, chat, mm. and I'm going to bring up my trusty. Taylor 314, which I absolutely adore um, because it has a it has a pickup system, an unusual pickup system that comes with these Taylors that just blows my mind. We were talking, and, yes, because um, I talk a lot about pickups on my channel. And when we did, that's so everyone knows, when we did the sound test yesterday, I was like, well, that sounds really great plugged in direct, doesn't it? And Tom was like, yeah, yep. you'll hear it now. It's well, really actually, to be honest, for all you folks listening that are musicians, um, Aaron heard the guitar and he was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. And he goes, yeah, it's probably because half of it's leaking into the mic. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens. So we it, unplugged it the mic. Happen, especially on an SM7 <laughs> where the element of the mic is like mm. four inches away from where I'm talking. Um, but anyway, I love the, the Taylor because it's got this pickup sound that sounds like an acoustic guitar amplified, unlike mm. the banjo sound that you get out of you know, the, the typical pickup system. And yeah. also I'm using a Voice Live 3 from TC Helicon. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not shilling for TC Helicon because I don't work there anymore, but mm. I'm shilling for this great product that we built that is such a boon for musicians. I'm using it for looping and my voice tone. This, I've got adaptive tone on my voice right now. And um, okay. I'll, I'll give you the stage, here you go. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we talked about doing a live song. And uh yeah, my 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 looper's my looper's down below me here and if you hear any like bips and bops and rhythmic things and maybe an extra guitar to help out during solos or whatever, 
it's because I pre-recorded them, and um, uh, it's it's not all smoke and mirrors. There's a, there's a slight amount of smoke and mirrors, but not all smoke. And mirrors. Anyway, here we go. This is a uh, this is a song from the EP called. Um, Are you gonna play? Are you gonna play the song that I requested, Mister Clean? Oh, is that the one you want to hear? Okay, yeah, yeah let's do yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk later on. We'll talk through these tracks, but this is this is one of my favorites. So um, it was so cool that Aaron said, "Oh, that song you're gonna do? That's my favorite." I'm like, "Oh God, that's why I do it." <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You know, I, have, I have a keyboard that has that clapping sound on it, and I do that sometimes too. What I have the no I have the extreme, so I'm thinking about using these effects, these um these loops on my live shows when we go back to playing live again, so I can trigger yep. off the round of applause at the end of the show. <laughs> you know, Tom, it, it works like once or twice a night. Tom, I'm, I'm not. You know, people, people are just going to assume that I'm just saying this because you're my guest and I'm a big fan of TC and, and yourself, but that is awesome. I love it. That's exactly oh, the you. kind of writing that I like. It's exactly the kind of performance that I like. And it's exactly the kind of solo and everything that I like. Hang on. Hang on. I'm thinking though, I've watched you on YouTube the last 10 years. Maybe you have liked 
maybe your music has seeped into my brain and that's why I like the music that you like. I'm just, I'm kidding. Yeah, that's got to be it. It, it can't be, you know, <laughs> of its, on its own merit. <laughs> Let me show this. I want, I want people to check this out. I really, really do love what you've, what you've created here. I'm, again, I, okay. I'm going to give you credit where credit is, is very well deserved. This is an awesome EP. Now, my first question then, and please ask us questions in the chat as we go. My first question is a weird one, but this is an EP, and some people might say, what's an EP? So an album usually is eight tracks or more. There's an official line, isn't there? An EP is usually I, I like guess. more. Like a single is one and a B-side or two. An EP is four yeah. or five. An album yeah. is usually eight or more. This is seven songs. So this might be a weird question, but I have to ask you, why didn't you record one more song and call it an album? Um, to me, an album is 11 songs. Uh, that's why I'm, that's why okay. my last two albums are 11. Okay. Um, or 45 minutes or something like that. Okay. And I poured my heart <laughs> out on this one and I was like, we were lucky to get the last two tracks. The last two tracks that I recorded were uh, Rich Boy, Sad Little Rich Boy and um, a minor funk. And because it was like, ah, oh, I got to get these out. So th that's, that's the reason, you know, it's like, oh, thank you. Thank you, Brad. Wow, how many are those? One, two, three, four, I lost count. I don't have my glasses, I can't see. <laughs> um, thank you, Philip. Thank you, Philip. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's why it's an EP. And here, can you guys, you guys can see the artwork o on the artwork. Is that your mouse that's, that's there planted by my right foot? My mouse? By your foot? Or is it my mouse? Your it's foot. my mouse. Good. Okay. <laughs> I can't see. Your I was foot. gonna say, get that thing off there. That's sullying my my artwork. Yeah. See, as you can see oh. by the artwork, because I tried to make the artwork relate to the song. I'm, you know, whipping. I'm a I'm a I'm like a lion tamer, going back. You bad emotions. Back. Take this. And yes, that is that is me standing on my deck with that chair. That chair was like sixty pounds. It's made out of oak. And I'm going. I took one picture. and I'm going. Oh well, I'm not going to be able to hold that up very much longer. And it just happened to be the perfect picture. And no, I was not whipping <laughs> anything. That's just my hand holding up like this. That's good. To say. And I had just gone down to Best Buy and bought a Wacom. You know those tablets where you draw with a pen. Yeah. yeah. And I drew that line and went. Oh. Is I there like a that. Is there a, a bear, a grizzly bear, the other side of that picture? Well, <laughs> either that or a lion on a little chair, on a little table going. <laughs> but the idea is, you know, the well-trained mind, if you can mm. keep it back, happiness will ensue. <laughs> right. So were all these songs on the EP written during 20, 2020 or before? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Um, I think well-trained mind was, was written in 2020. You know, uh, I can't remember. Uh, I think I, I know that a couple of them came out in the last half of 2020, and that was Rich Boy and a minor funk. And yes, it's a minor funk, not a minor funk that a musician, the way a musician would pronounce it. Oh, he's got a song about a, a funk song in A minor. No, it's a minor funk. It's like a mood. You're in a bit of a minor funk. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, most of them were written before before uh 2020 i think mm. and it just takes me so long i'm a i'm a mixing fanatic mm. i've got a pro tools rig uh hd rig from back when steam was powering <laughs> pro tools and uh i mix endlessly because i'm so fussy about getting everything perfect and that's probably why it took a little while and when i heard mr clean i thought john mayer because of the acoustic guitar and the lead guitar on the Strat. And now I've yeah. seen you play it because you've kind of got that B minor chord that he uses sometimes and the finger yeah. style picking as well. Is So is yeah. John Mayer an influence of yours? Is that Absolutely. Ah, Absolutely. That makes sense then. That guy just blows me away. He is so talented. His voice is so great. His guitar picking is great. His electric soloing. Like yeah. there's no flash and flare. Yeah. It's just... Oh my gosh! The right, right note at the right time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I can't listen to it. I just get depressed. <laughs> Actually, there's there's this really cool new video of him 
playing as you as we talked chatted about earlier where he's playing for Martin guitars at the Nam show and it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen he's in this little sort of sound cubby and um he's just there with an acoustic guitar not even plugged in yeah and a, and a selection of acoustic guitars I guess they're all Martins um and you know he's got the absolute best mic you could ever have on a vocal on his vocal and the absolute, yeah. you know, like he's got like some sort of coals or something or an AKG or some, some very expensive mic placed in a very weird position on the guitar, but it sounds so good. And yeah. I saw that right before I knew we were going to do this interview and I'm like, Oh, I better kick it up a notch. <laughs> so everyone is talking about that right now. Everyone's, everyone has sent me a link. We do a, we do a Martin um, sort of tribute show on Mondays and everyone yeah. has sent me a link of, of that John Mayer show, and I'm like, yeah, it's awesome, and I love, I love John Mayer. But the thing is, I'd, I'd love to get a Martin. Well, you should, but I like that Taylor. Someone, um, Patsy Smith said, amazing guitar sound. Um, I'm gonna ask. I asked Tom to send me the serial number so I can look up that exact model of Taylor because I've made some changes in the like, recently. I also would like to ask him to send me some direct recordings for the pickup in, straight into his computer so I can actually hear exactly. What that sounds like direct it sounds really really impressive i really am pretty blown away um i have yeah, a picture here of forensic that's what i do when i review pickups on this channel i've done 18 now i i post oh. videos of them actually directly in and they rarely sound that natural the, the cole clark does oh, the okay. maiden does um that's what my channel is all about tom you should you should check it out and subscribe sometime <laughs> uh, <clears throat> <it> was, uh... <laughs> Of course, I've been watching it like a hawk every day. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I have a but picture yeah, I, of I, I, I have a picture of the session you're referring to, just in case some people I, haven't seen it. I'd like to it. have a Martin for is. the for the specific. There it is. That's the one. Yeah, He's check in that, that out. A weird cubby. Check that out later it's, if you see, haven't. Look at seen those it. mics. Look at those mics. I do yeah, for those mics. That's what I want to talk about. So but look at that miking position of that one on his guitar. It's it's not even twelfth fret, and it's I bet you anything it's figure of eight to get his voice out of there so that they can crank the compression on the guitar. Because I know it's compressed because later on he's really getting in, he's pounding it and the guitar's not getting any louder. It's just like, right. bong, 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 bong. Um, but yeah. Yeah, but look, let's talk about, um, I didn't know if you wanted, how much you want to talk about um, TC Helicon today or not. Uh, obviously we're focusing on the EP. I don't mind at all. I don't okay. mind at all. There are certain areas I cannot go to. Right, of course. But here's my, here's my thing I want to discuss live performance which the tc pedals are incredibly amazing at right I've, I, I've used them the whole time more than any other product with yeah. this with this lockdown like on mondays with with maury when we do our, our martin stream he plays different martins through two mics it sounds incredible and when he sings he sings through the real mics he's not using pedals or loopers it just sounds fat and a few weeks ago i did the same thing i just used a real mic i really had a great time with streaming, we don't need to make our pickup sound good. We can just use a mic, and it sounds incredible. Of course, then maybe we can't use the loops and things like that. But the streaming thing has kind of changed the game a bit, hasn't it? Like, we don't need to plug in. We have different challenges with the streaming now. Um, well, yeah, definitely um, with using an open mic is always preferable, Aaron, as you know, for an um, acoustic guitar. Always. Yeah, yeah. Unless you got my guitar. But no, 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 really, it, it is preferable, but you can't use looping. And, and right. I'm always a guy that I always need that extra little bit of something behind me. I, um, maybe around a campfire. So here's a, mm. here's a campfire. I've got a little diesel generator over here to run my <laughs> yeah. voice like three. Um, but yeah, but the, the problem is once you get on a stage and once we all get back to stages again, mm. soon it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Once we all get back to stages again... You won't be able to use a mic. You're, you're going to have to go in with a wire because of the volumes, you know, necessary. Yeah. No, I get it. And I like to use loops like you. I mean, again, I watched all your videos. I, I'm, I take the same approach that you do. I noticed you're using the condenser mic today as well for your vocals. So um, rather uh, than no, a dynamic. No, this is not a condenser mic. This is a dynamic. Really? Yeah. It's a Shure SM7, which oh. is a SM57 with a big old butt. Oh, it looks like a condenser, so it's not phantom power. No, I know it does. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, mm. it's it's been around for years. Um, I have a dear friend at Sure who made sure I got one. Ah, I know who that and might be. <laughs> 
Do you know Laura? I I know of her for the same reason I know you from the from the demo videos. Yeah, it's a small yeah. world, Tom. It's a small world in the oh music industry. Oh my gosh, industry. it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is, and she's doing really well at Sure, and I'm so proud of her. She, you know, she, she started with us as a demonstrator, and I was all yeah. worried that she wasn't going to figure out the product right, and I'm like. Okay, Nam's Nam's coming up. You sure you you sure you don't want me to help you out? You know, to get the thing. She's like, I got this covered, and man, did she ever have it covered? She was like, blew, she blew us away, and she's got that incredible voice. There was someone else at a Nam show I saw a few weeks ago. There's another girl that played, did the Barry White effect on the on the. She was demoing oh, yeah. on the stage. She was awesome. Selena, as well. yeah, Selena. so good. We've wow. been so fortunate with some of these singers. Oh my god. Yeah, so 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 good. I All right, in awe of them. Let's talk about the album in detail then. So again, I, I sure. urge everyone to go and check it out. Here it is. This is it. It's on all the streaming platforms. Uh, you can go and check it out after we finished. I really recommend that you do. So let, I want to go through song by song, if you don't mind. I'll give you my notes that I've I written would love there. That. And you can, you can sort of give us a brief overview of anything um, fun or um, the meanings of things. But um, yep. I really love the writing and the production. Like I said, it's exactly up my, up my street. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. But Well Trained Mind awesome. is the title track and is the first song. You've got a spoken verse, which I found interesting um, and, yeah. uh, and very cool. And you've also got a cool sax player on there as well. So um, can you tell us a bit about Well Trained Mind? Yeah. On, on that one, it's basically, um, you know, it started off with a bass riff. Yeah, I know the bass riff sounds like about a million other songs, but that's what hit me at the time, so I did it. <laughs> um, and, yeah, and then it became... And then the lyrics became well trained mine, and I go, oh good, I've got an, I, I've got a focus for this, and then I, I put the organ on it, um, real Hammond, I got a real Hammond back there, mm. and it started really taking shape, and then my friend Gene Hardy was in town because I was borrowing his Leslie um, for my Hammond, and I said, hey, w could you please just stop by and blast some sax on this one song it'd be perfect for you and he comes in and he arranged all the background saxophones like all the sax sax section stuff himself <laughs> on the fly and then he did these killer solos um interestingly enough about the solo like he is a, he is a really talented soloist i mean you he could solo for half an hour and you would not be bored and you wouldn't hear be be hearing all the same old sort of sax riffs that you hear from mm. you know other sax players perhaps um the the two sax the, the sax solo is this long it's two sax solo layers he took mm. one run at it and i said oh that's okay yeah you just do that and then i'll do an organ solo or a, or a keyboard solo or a rather guitar solo afterwards why don't you just blast another one just so that we've got something in case there's a bad note of course there never is Mm -hmm. But then I I listened to them both and I went oh my god, they they mesh beautifully. So I put the second one after the first one, and you can oh. you can't hear mm. where he's ending one and going into the next one, and it's just so cool and all wow. the but a bop but a bop section stuff, and it's funny too because he's back there playing sax, he's back there playing sax behind me and I'm facing forward away from him at, at my 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 Pro Tools rig, and. He's going, yeah, yeah, is that okay? Is that okay? And I've basically got my head down going, oh my God, this is incredible. <laughs> you know, I, it, it just, it literally blew me away just to hear that sound, that cool playing mm. on my tune. And it, it, it took the sound from, took my song from 50 to 100, man. It just, just killed it. So yeah. do enjoy, please. And uh, Gene Hardy is available for remote sax work. Um there he is. And uh, the Gene Hardy. You you will not be ha unhappy with the stuff that he gives you. He also plays saw professionally. Oh. He's a professional saw player. Sourced. Um, and he also plays fiddle, I just found out. And I'm a would-be fiddle player, so I mind him for some uh, tips. <laughs> mm. Anyway, that's Well-Trained Mind. If you have any questions um, about more about it, uh, you know, ask later on. Very, very cool. The next track is Mr. Clean, one of my favorites that you played for us earlier. So we discussed yes. that already. I will ask you though, how did you record, I presume the acoustic is, a, is your tailor with a microphone, and how do you record your Strat? Do you use plugins or do you use an amp and a mic? Um, first of all, that's my Larave. I've got a Larave D10, ah. which is an absolutely gorgeous acoustic instrument. Mm. Um, and it was just mic'd. 
is mic'd with a, oh, don't remember. Um, and my Strat through, I think it was my, I've got a deluxe um, with an OCD. Because mm. the deluxe is just mm. way too loud when it, by the time it's starting to sound kind of interesting, it's way too loud. Um, so that's, yeah, that's basically that. And it, it just gave me the feel in the moment. And I, I'm a Strat player. I'm a, I'm a, I'm just Mr. Strat. I love that mm, thing. Me too. I love him. I was a Les Paul player years ago with a, with a Les Paul so low that you could see light between the top of the <laughs> Les Paul and the bottom of me. Um, so, uh, just a couple and a couple interesting notes. There. So you you use analog. You don't use plugins then, when you record. No, certainly not. You're not for guitar. Fully, fully analog. Wow, that's good. Well, to yeah, know. it's it's more fun. I got amps all over this this room. I got amps all over the place. Yeah. Why would I not use them? I mean, I I love it that they're a little cantankerous. And every day you turn it on and you turn the, the knobs to something and yeah. and it's loud. And it's not coming through a, a woofer and a tweeter. Yeah. It's coming through the 12 or the 8 or the 10 that it's yeah. supposed to be coming oh, out yeah. of. And it's a little loud. It's a little hard on your ears. And it's, <laughs> it might feed back a little bit. I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. It's interesting because you're I mean, using the TC pedal, which is loops and very, I mean, I, I say that thing is ahead of its time. I still say that now. And it is kind of futuristic, isn't it? Looping and loading, all that stuff. And then when you record, you're doing it all old school analog. It's, it's, it's kind of a parallel, isn't it? Well, the Voice Live 3, which is what you're talking about, is a means to an end. Um, let's see the Larivee. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I got to show you. I got to go get it. Anyway, the Voice Live 3 is a means to an end. So at gigs, mm. I totally use Voice Live 3. Like for my guitar sound, pre-prepared to go to my amp. And of course, my vocals. I mean, yeah. Here, I'll be right back. I got to unplug just for a sec here. We'll yeah. go get my Laravel. Hang on. Yeah. He's going to grab the Laravel for Philip. Yeah, I find this stuff really, really fascinating because um, we're in a world now, as you know, on my channel, I have digital, analog. And it's really interesting to know what people are using. Oh, it's a colorway. Very cool. Let me go full screen here. Mm, that's my beautiful. Baby. Wow. It, isn't it lovely? Uh, look, Mother of Pearl. You know, it's... Yeah, I love that. It's, it's got all the bling, but it's also a, a lovely sounding acoustic guitar. And I've got the LR Bags uh, Anthem. Oh, that's, it, a, that's, a good, that's a great system. Yeah. It, it's... <laughs> okay. I'm not working for anybody here, but I, I, I put the Stage Pro pickup system in it which has a mic in there and it's all got a blending system and a lovely pick pickup under here and i thought oh yeah uh, now i'm set now i'm set for, for my gig sound for my acoustic yeah and then i went into long and mcquade and played the taylor and i went oh mm -hmm. yeah i just went oh my god i spent all that money on putting this thing in here and then the taylor just walks on it uh, wow. to me wow. to me okay um yeah you know, i gotta try thing, that it, It'll get you through in a pinch. It, it sounds quite nice, but it still has a little bit of that something that the the three fourteens not giving me. Anyway, wow. th that's my that's my lovely lady. Taylor. If you're watching, Look at Tom. That. Tom is available. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. Did you did you cut the hole to put the preamp, or was the preamp already in the side of the guitar? Uh, when that guitar came out, it was um, equipped with another pickup system. Oh, like a fishman or something, and the, which shall remain nameless, and which was an absolute disaster. Ah, and so I, you replaced I that. couldn't. I, I, because the sides of that thing are the most gorgeous rosewood. I thought, well, I can't patch it because it'll never match. So I got to put something in there, and that's why I went with the. Well, one of the reasons I went with the anthem. The next track. Well, the stage pro, stage pro, the stage pro is the part on the bout, the, yeah. the controls. And the anthem is the pickup system. Philip says thank you. Uh, for is, you, for those of you who are guitar. on the on the interview today, and we're talking tech talk. I'm sorry if you're if no, you're I think to I, songs and talk you know, about songs. Look, my my channel my channel's about gear, so I have to bring it in a little bit. I, I'm I'm unapologetic okay. about it. Although most of these questions are for myself, so I apologize if you're not interested in gear. <laughs> um, well, I, <laughs> we all sound like a bunch of Canadians. We're all apologizing all the time. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's a British thing as well. 
A, a minor funk. Now that looks like something when you're studying guitar and you open the book up and it says A minor funk, right? Like you said earlier. But you're actually, that's a play on words. It's a, I'm in a minor funk. I like that a lot. That's kind of psychedelic it rock. It wasn't it? intended to, it, it, it oh. wasn't intended as such at the beginning. I've got, you know, you know, you got, we've all got phone memos, right? You know, you sing to yourself or you play to yourself on your phone because it's so incredibly handy. Mm. And then I had labeled that one A minor oh, funk. Oh, very cool. And of course, later I looked at that and went, Oh my gosh, that's a song coming on. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, it writes itself. As soon as you realize that a minor funk, I'm, I'm in a funk, but it's not a big one. It's just sort of a, a small one. And, and the way I wrote the lyrics, um, well, I'm in a minor funk, feeling sort of low down. Um, I, I can't remember my lyrics, but it's all about equivocating about how much of a funk you are in. I'm not really in a big funk. It's just you know, a minor funk. And Let's then, hope on your next album, you're not in a major funk. Never. I would never admit it. <laughs> we all get in major funks, of course. <laughs> That's why I wanted... Again, you know, I'm, it's, it's all about this emotional control thing. I'm in a minor funk. I feel this sort of lot of... But, but if you listen to the lyrics, it's about... Yeah, but it's going to turn around. Mm -hmm. I know that it will, and I know now, while I'm in the funk, that it's going to turn around, so everything's going to be fine. There's another, album, there's another song off my, sorry to divert here, but there's another song off my, off Supersonic. Um, it's called uh, Blues Passing Through, and it's not a blues song like, the blues are passing through, and it's not like that. It's, it's, it's telling yourself that, yeah, I'm in the blues right now, or you're in the blues but it's going to pass away. It's a biochemical thing. It's going to pass away and all will be well. The, the sky will be blue again, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I guess this is sort of a thread running through my stuff. Mm. Am I revealing too much of my sort of psyche now? <laughs> I like it. I mean, the, the, this is fascinating to me as much as the, you know, as much as the gear is important to me, this, of yeah. course, the writing and the creation is, <laughs> sometimes we forget about this stuff. And I like to listen to songs like you create because it reminds me, like when I heard the chord progression in uh, Well Trained Mind, no, sorry, in Mr. Clean, I was like, oh, that's a really interesting progression. That's the sort of stuff that I want to, you know, when you hear, when, we, when we're inspired by, by music we listen to and we think, why didn't I write that? Or I want to write something like that. And it really gets you out of out of the um, the mold that you can fall into just going through the motions. Yeah. So. I think this stuff is really I think, important. I think listening back to that now that that's like right here, right now. What is that chord progression? Can you share it with us? Mm -hmm. Right here, right now. Mm. Watching the world wake up to history. Awesome. I, I think, you know, okay. It could have been stolen from there. There's only 12 chords. There's only 12, uh, rather, there's a billion chords, especially if you're in jazz. But there's only 12 notes. So, yeah, sometimes that's to go through that. Sometimes that stuff that you hear and it sounds familiar. Sometimes that's a good thing. It's like seeing an old friend, you know. Yeah, can, can you just talk through that verse? Because I love that. Yeah, that, that D major progression okay. is so cool. So, uh, it's 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 D E. Uh, G D. It's very very simple. Only it's over the D pedal. Uh. And I then where that. the song started, the whole song started out with the riff, with this. Mm. At minor 11. Which actually is played down here, but I had to play it up here because it makes it sound a little fuller. It sounds kind of weak down here. Ooh, that sounds nice. What was I thinking? <laughs> That's a yeah. great progression. And then and then when you performed it, so did you pre-record? Because our friend Chris Decker is here, and I've, I've watched him live, I was going to say live in concert. Yep. And what he does, which is awesome, which I try to do and I always, I always forget to do, is he will, he'll be singing a verse, he'll be recording the guitar part. So as soon as he finishes, and you mentioned this off air, that, that it's one of your, we all, we all hate watching people build loops. So he will be singing, oh, recording the guitar only, 
as soon as he starts singing, he goes into a solo. It's really smooth. So with what, but you didn't do that, right? Did you pre-record the loop? Not this time. This time right. I pre-recorded those loops yesterday because I didn't want to go, you know, to do the whole build, the loop building thing. To me, that's tiresome. Um, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, but I do the same thing, only I have a drum machine as well going into my looper. And my looper is wild, meaning it's not synced to MIDI. It's mm. my, it's my, after all these years, and I've built this custom pedal where I can um, play the drum machine and then I'll press record at the exact moment of a downbeat. And then I have to hit two foot switches to stop the drum machine and start playback on the drum uh, or, right. or on the looper. So, and then I have to hit two switches to stop the looper and start the drum machine. And those are wild. That has to be done wild. So it's a, it's a lovely challenge. And I do that for every single song I do. Um, Oh. And I do exactly what Chris does. I've got to. I've got to go to your site, Chris, and 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 check that out because I love all these sneaky little tricks. So that it's just like, wow, you sound great, but you don't take the twenty minutes to go boom, tika bop, tika boom, yeah. tika bop, tika boom, tika button, and listen to it for a while. Yeah, it sounds cool. Okay, now here's the other part. Ah, boring to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I mean. if some of you do that. I I I, I apologize. Uh, but to me, as a listener, I'd rather you just blow me away by just being in the moment maybe um, maybe if you're doing it as a visual thing like ed sheeran yeah. like hey look at me i'm going to build a song for you live like once during yeah. the set but if you do it every, like I, I i don't like when i stop the verse and think oh i forgot to record it i guess to record it there and i'll play it's yeah. all it's all takes so long and it's so boring for the audience i i totally agree i love i love preparing it though when i'm doing you know the the intro or whatever i i'll put it i'll put it in the can for mm. later because right. you record, you know, it's playing along. Oh, it sounds really cool. This is the intro. And then instead of hitting play, you hit stop. Right. You just, so the loop actually doesn't play back until right. you go and taking a solo now. And it just sounds wonderful and full. And nobody in the audience is wiser, except that, yeah. you know, a musician, the, the one musician in the back of the place is going, just a second. But yeah, I, if if people don't like, pre-prepared loops sorry mm. but i just felt we'd do that so the drums are just I'm, I'm just confused here the drums you have there you've recorded them in as a loop from a drum machine uh on the songs that i'm doing today yeah i've just bopped on the guitar oh okay and you've recorded yeah. that in advance but, but, okay boop, but. okay and there was there just happened to be reverb on the guitar at that time so the reverb got blended into the here, let's go there now. Um, here's here's uh, Mr. Clean. Oh, that's the, that's the ES2. That sounds great. Yeah, that's just that's the beauty of <laughs> of, of of a non under saddle pickup. It yeah, the, the under saddle side. pickup. You could bash away on the guitar and it doesn't make any noise because yeah. that's its its forte is to be feedback resistant. But this thing, you can bang on it. Well, what I say to people, though, is if you don't want to do the banging stuff, then don't get one of those because it also can add undesirable noises as well. There's, there's, well, yeah, I like the, this I like the body is, sound. Yeah. This thing is feedback resistant. Oh, my gosh. Mm. I play loud, and I've got a subwoofer on, on my little Bose PA, and I'm like... And uh, no problem there. I don't actually use that as much. I, I play the guitar. I play thumb style... Uh, lots of thumb style stuff. Um, uh, mm. You know, I, I play the bass is big. Yeah. And it's always there. Um, so, and this thing just powers on through. So, yeah. It, it's cool for that. Um, the other oh. part of that loop is, is, is the little bit of. Uh, Mm. That little. So it's just that little bit of color, and then I switch that to. Uh, uh. Mm. 
Yeah, sounds great. Because the Voice Life 3 has that swap mode where you've got an alternative uh, loop to go to yeah. on, the, on the B layer. So if, if people are watching and want to get into looping and stuff, there's nothing to stop you from pre-recording your loops before you play the song. If you just set the tempo, record some things, yep. store them in there, and then you can use them. Yep. That's a really cool little thing to, to, to yeah, throw you, in. You can store, what is it, 50 loops or 100 loops? I can't remember. I think we expanded the memory. Yeah, I, I started doing it with backing tracks for the streams, but it's, I never thought yeah. about actually recording my own loops before I went live because that's a, that's a nice way to to make it slicker as well. That's a cool, that's a, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. And, and then, the beauty is, uh, if you get bored, you can you can mishmash like with a playback. It's like that verse is always going to hit at thirty two bars mm. or or whatever it is. But with the loops, you can go ah, nobody's paying any attention. I'm going to twist off and play a little bit more of a solo, a little longer. Yeah, yeah. you know. And and if you use the pre-recorded parts, Aaron, do you use the automation? Um, I never use that. I don't use step. I don't use automation. I just use oh. the. I mean, I I just love the the effects and the looper. We talking we're talking today about stereo effects, which you you can't really use them live. When I play live, I use one speaker anyway. But when you're yeah. streaming, I was listening to a review yesterday. This guy did a review of the Quad Cortex. Everyone's going crazy over this pedal. But in his review, he hit a big stereo delay, and and um, I, I was yeah, I suddenly I suddenly got kind of disorientated. I was like, wow, that's really awesome. These are the these are the things that we should use with streaming. We should we should yeah. take these pros that we can't use maybe a, a, a live gig and use them. I want to start going stereo for my live stream so I can do ping pong delays. Um, yeah, there's some great. We we could. Yeah, it actually makes me feel a bit. I feel a bit wobbly when you when you put that effect on. <laughs> But I mean, this like this is stuff we could talk about for hours. There's so much cool stuff. I used to use to play yeah, let's acoustic. Let's go back to the record. I used to use to play acoustic for years, and then I discovered the Voice Live Three and thought this thing has even more. This is like everything in one box. And ever since I got that thing, every time I go to a NAM, I say this every time. Every time I go to a NAM show or speak to a company, it's when are you going to make something like that? When are you going to stop trying to make an, a tube amp sound like a you know a box that makes, sounds like a tube amp when I can just use a tube yeah. amp anyway? Yeah. And make me something where I can have pre-recorded loops, backing vocals, stereo delays on my voice, pitch correction, you know, things that I can actually inspire me, especially now when we can't play in a band. I want a band in the box, you know. So Yeah. Let's move on to the next song. That was um A Minor Funk. We, we talked about a minor funk, yeah. A minor funk. Oh, by yeah. the way, just there's a note on that one. Yeah. Uh, because it was recorded late in the process, that's one mic on the drums. Oh wow! So that is wow. not multi mic'd. Wow. Uh, which some people might find interesting because normally <laughs> you think, oh, you got to have one on the kick, you got to have one on the snare, yeah. maybe a couple of overheads. That is one mic. That's my Rode NT2. Cool. NT2A. It's a sound, isn't it? When we did we did a version of the Gambler and the drummer I used to work with only had like two mics, and we were so stressed, like, oh, we want to have a mic on everything, but. It's just a, it's just a different sound, isn't it? It's a it's a old school. It's a wonderful sound. It's a cohesive sound. <laughs> um, uh, also, another note is, at the time, I was using the Clark Technic LE two two A clone, the KT two A, mm. which is a tube uh, optical compressor. That if you want to <laughs> get one, just get one. It's the most gooey, wonderful, and I was. Into, I was recording into that, so the the effect of that, and now man, the meter was just going. Pfft. It was just staying over there because it's optical. It's very slow, right? It's mm. not like an eleven seventy six where it goes point point. Um, but yeah, I, I used that uh, directly through, and it really really helped the sound on that one. So that that's a note on that one. The next track is "Old Love Letter." I love this one too. It reminds me of Elvis Costello, very classic singer songwriter rock. I love this line in it. I wasn't ready to feel. I don't know. I don't know that a memory could hurt so bad. I didn't know that a memory could hurt so bad. She taught me how to love, and we practiced every minute that we had. <laughs> That's awesome. There's some great. There's some great lyrics and one line. I love those kind of um, those one line lyrics in songs. There's some. There's loads of them in this in this EP. Um, would you, uh, Aaron? Thank you. Would oh you agree? Are you to feel free to take these quotes for your promo. By the way, Aaron Short said this. Um, would you agree? I heard some Elvis Costello in there. Any? Are you a fan, or does that deeply offend you that I, I said? I'm not that? a super fan of Elvis Costello. Uh, Costello, I realize what he's done, and he, he's he's amazing, and he's also married to one of our uh, island girls here. Um, 
Diana Krall. But but um, yeah, I, I never called that uh, to me. Like I was going to play that one for uh, us today. Mm-hmm. But I thought, oh, man, that is so country. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. So I went for the, Mr. Clean instead. Can I can I ask you to play it anyway? Uh, which one? Um, Old Love Leather. I do like that song a lot. Uh, which, uh, how's it go? <laughs> well, you wrote it. Uh, <laughs> I can never remember uh, my own songs either. Uh, it's terrible. <laughs> Sorry, go on. I can't remember. been a while since i've played these so- when did you record this <laughs> I, oh, just well, a week having ago having recorded it you put it away and it's gone it's you're like oh it's fine even it's james fine. taylor uses a prompter i put i put him know, on this he's played I, those songs for years it's fine. Like, i put i put you on the spot but that is another one of my favorites yeah um the next oh, well, one that's, that's so cool i'm glad you i'm really glad you like that one i like them all but yeah see that i said elvis costello that kind of that's what i'm into i love tom waits elvis costello um, Mark Knopfler. That's the kind of stuff that right. I really love. Um, okay. I wasn't ready to feel. What is it? Yeah, <laughs> it's gone. I can't. Did, did you write that, or was it just played off your voice live three? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. You can tell by the out of tuneness of that last little attempt that <laughs> that was brutally live. Ah, uh, that's gone. I'm Don't sorry. Worry. Don't it's worry. because I'm on the it's because I'm on the spot. I know, I know. I I'm on the same. Money and Things has a scar feel. I thought kind of a scar yes. feel, like Lady Madonna yes. type thing. Um And and that one has vocals uh from three young ladies in in a big fourteen piece band that I play with the R an R and B band called The Midnights. And uh there's you know, there's how many singers we got? We got like six singers. Wow. Uh, and there's full choreo and everything. Uh, the girls are doing the whole sort of combined, you know, movements and stuff. Nice. They, they look great. And um, it really brings a visual aspect to it. But they're also really great singers. And they stopped by one day and uh, put the Bee Gees on there. Um, hello, blues, guitar, and harmonica. All right. That's Warren. Um, he's, a, he's in Australia. And I want him to hear your acoustic later because whenever we play a cool guitar on the show, he always goes and buys one. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Or, I he, think... or he goes, oh, no, we got Maiden <laughs> guitars here. They're better than anything out there. He, I, 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 come, I come in. Well, Warren, what do you play right now? But I think you're going to like the, the Taylor. I'll, I'll definitely send this link to Taylor when we're done, Tom. Uh, it'll be good for okay. us both. And, and what's his name? <laughs> it's Warren. Blues? Or... Warren, Warren. Warren. Yeah, he's a big blues he's fan. He's from Oz. Um, I might, he might ask what you to area? play. Do you know my connection with Oz? With I don't. Australia? I don't. You don't? Oh. You were born there? Um. I played with a, I, I did a number of shows with a prominent Australian named Jimmy Barnes. Oh, wow. Jimmy Barnes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And um, we did, I, I think I did five tours there, six tours. I can't remember. And one of them being the one they made a big movie of that Australians saw called Australian Made. And um, I'll, I'll send you a link. Perhaps uh, you could put it up. But also you can go to my site and there's some pictures of us. Uh, rocking in Sydney and um, stuff like that, and also I played on a on an album by another Australian band called the Divinals, and um, they were the ones. It, you saw Austin Powers, right? Where there's I touch myself, I'm crazy about you. <laughs> um, yeah, I I played on the album right before that with that band. We were in Sunset Sound. Uh, in wow. LA, which is, you know, that's where Prince, yes, Beach Boys, everybody is recorded. Um, but yeah, that's my Australian connection. Did you so, play yeah, any Cold Chisel? Us. Did you play? Did you play K. San with him? Uh, I think we played. <laughs> sometimes Jimmy would say, "Okay, we're going to whip out this Cold Chisel tune tonight." Yeah, and we would do it. That's um, awesome. But we were playing his stuff like. Uh, 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 Don't play any covers, by the way. I'll get a copyright strike. Oh, okay, I can't. <laughs> Working no. hard to make a living, seeking shelter from the rain. Father, son, left to carry on blue denim in his veins. Okay. Oh, 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 oh he's a working class man. You 
You just got you just got this video um, deleted from YouTube. That's fine. Um, <laughs> oh no! Sorry. Oh shoot! I'm... Hey, you did it, not me. Um, oh no! Dang it! He says the, the vinyls are that good. The, the, if you, that's the thing with those covers, right? If you, it, it's a good test to see how good you are if the algorithm picks up or not. The, the vinyls yeah, are I legends. One of my, one of my, but the lead singer got MS and had to retire. Uh, a thing oh. put on it. Cold Chisel was the my Divinals favorite band. Legends. Yeah, Chrissy, wow. Chrissy died. She passed on. And actually, oh. the drummer from the album that we made, he, I heard he just passed on too. And I'm like, oh my God. This is... Ouch. Cold, I think they say Cold Chisel if you're Australian. Where was Cold I? Cold Chisel, mate. Make this Cold. right. Country rock. This is my favorite line of the whole EP. All I've got left is to make things right. That's a great line. I'm going to use that myself. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's oh, all. Another one. Um, uh, waking up with a whiskey head and a heart full of lead. <laughs> really, really cool. I love it. I, so th I love these. I live for these little lines. And you're, when you're writing, you're sitting there going, and this little guy's on your shoulder, and he's going, you're, you're not going to really put that on there, are you? Right, right. No, no that's, that's totally derivative and crap. And you have to say, Okay, thanks for your opinion, pal. But this guy on this side saying, "Go ahead, do it, write it. Yeah. It'll be great." And yeah. that was one of the times when um, I had to just. And then when you're writing it, you, you'll uh, that line will just go boom into your head, and you'll go. You just sort of do a little dance around the rooms, like, "Oh my, I go, oh, I love." line and every time you sing it you get a little sort of a little buzz down your back because it just feels so right mm. and then finally we have sad little rich boy which is a kind of reggae feel with huge r harmonies those harmonies are saying massive in the chorus of that yeah those are the those are the girls the again. girls yeah yeah not the, not the voice live three one, right <laughs> there's i'm sorry but there's no voice live three on my ep um, so TC Helicon's probably not going to post any of this anyway. So. <laughs> Dang. But you are using the Go XLR for your stream today. Yeah, I'm using Go Twin. That's right. It's yeah. my um, interface. I don't dare move it lest we get unplugged and, mm. and get messed up. But Sad Little Rich Boy is is kind of an interesting one. It's one of my first, I, I guess you could call it a political tune. Mm. And... Um, it started off with just me and my Les Paul through my, I've got a, a Laney AC30 clone. Mm. And I just, there's this little guitar part that was just bugging me and it's so dead simple. I was thinking, there that guy came up on my shoulder again and said, ah, that's too simple, man. What, they're going to think you're, you know, not, you don't have enough creativity. And I just went, doom, chick doom, chick doom, chick doom, chick doom, chick doom. And and it sounded so cool through the through the Laney with the mm. Les Paul, which I hardly ever use. Mm. Um, and then I went, oh no, it's reggae. I can't play reggae on the <laughs> drums because because I'm playing drums. Those are real kit all the way throughout, and I'm playing drums on all of it. And um, you know, I'm an aspiring drummer. And and I thought, oh reggae, I've never done that. Where you go to do that the big beat thing? Where you go. And oh. I had to learn how to play reggae, and then I, I did. I, you played everything. You played all the instruments on this on this thing. You, all the instruments. Wow. Yeah. Well, my hat. Everything come, except sax and the Bee Gees. If I had a hat, I would take it off right now. That's awesome. I love. I love. <laughs> I love hearing that musicians do that when they play everything. I'm. I'm still well, learning. That's why it takes me so long. I'm still learning the guitar, so you know. It's like <laughs> well, so am I, pal. Oh my gosh, I got ways to go. Okay, but, so yeah, and and I am proud of that part. Yeah. That's that's the that's the EP, and I, this is what I thought though. Every song is, as we just went through it, is a different style, pretty much. So, is this something that you do on purpose? Do you try to write an album or an EP that has a song from different genres, or is this just coincidence? If if I was smart, I would write in one genre. Right. Because that's what, label, that's what record labels tell you. I, I have an eclectic wide range of influences i mean i'm influenced by country like yeah country and and rock and funk you know the funk came from living in dallas but yeah i i i guess the way i have to characterize it is these are just what came out these just came out 
and then I went and when I was doing the, the mastering for the record, I was sort of listening to it and then leaving it alone and listening to it. And I'd come back to it and go, man, this is way too far ranging. Because if somebody who likes, you know, the funk or the or the rock, you know, like a minor funk is 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 kind of a minor funk is actually kind of rocky. Mm. They're going to get to that country tune and they're going to go, what? <laughs> Yeah, so, I know. Uh, I know. Yeah. I, I get it. I'm the same as you. I okay. When when you're a kid and you speak to someone at a record label or something, and you say, you know, I want to, I want to be an artist, and they say, Well, what do you do? And you say, Well, I do everything. No, you have to have you have to have a a thing, a genre, an elevator pitch. But I think we live in a world now where you don't need it. I mean, and and now you see artists just releasing singles and songs of all different styles. I think that's kind of gone out the window now, which is. Maybe a cool thing, but it still sounds like you. The whole thing still sounds like you, even though each style is different. It actually made me think, like, because when I when I hear you sing, of course, I think I I can't help but think of you doing your product demos because, of course, I grew up on that. Um, yeah, it's just the way it, it's just the way it is. But that made me yeah. think, like, that's the sort of thing a product demo person would do, right? They would write different styles to showcase a product. So I just wondered if any of that kind of bled through or if you just enjoy writing in different styles. I just I just found that well, interesting. I, I enjoy writing in different styles. I think that's what it is. And I'm I'm pretty unfiltered. So I'll just go into the studio and put on a guitar and turn up an amp and go, oh, well, it sounds kind of country today or it sounds kind of that. But the whole idea of, of releasing singles these days, I think it's because, you know, people just don't have the attention span excuse me, the attention span or the time to listen to a whole, you know, uh, record these days. You know, when somebody says, hey, you know, I've, I've got this new EP. Uh, why don't you have a listen to it? And people go, ah, yeah, they listen to the first 30 seconds of each song and then they go bing, bing, bing. And then, oh, look at the cat video. He's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're so distracted. Yeah. Um, so releasing singles, I think, is, is what I'm going to do from now on. I think I'm going to, um, I've got ideas for, for what's going to come up. Um, maybe keep it a little simpler. You know, when you're when you're recording digitally, when you're recording through Pro Tools and everything, it it doesn't have the sort of e each piece of what you record doesn't have the composite strength. And I, maybe it's because I'm not the best engineer yet. Um, but when you record in analog, a guitar, bass, and drums is can be all you need because mm. it just sounds oh my gosh, it's so full. But but because I'm recording digitally, I'm like, wow, that's cool. But I, oh my God, I got to put this little boom ticket, 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 boom ticket to get to add that part. And then, oh man, I think I need some chord underpinning. I need the Hammond, you know, to fill that in a little bit or something. Um, so I think I think I'll be doing that for the next one. But yeah, sorry, I got off on a tangent there. <laughs> No, it's, it's awesome. And to summarize, I love this and I want everyone to listen to this and send it to their friends. Okay. Tom Lang, well-trained mind, tomlangmusic.com. If you go on the website, then you can click on the link to listen to the, to the, to the EP and please listen to it. Let me know what you think in the comment section of this video, because this video will, will remain up. So in the comments, let us know what you think. Let us know what your favorite song is yeah. and do share it with your friends. I think it's good to promote people that are writing songs I'm, I'm gonna sound like such an old man but you don't really hear classic songwriting there's a new song out now that's that with that girl singer i was listening to a reaction video earlier on the one about the driver's license thing i thought you know what that's actually a pretty darn good song you don't really hear good song i mean i sound like such an old man they don't write songs like they used to <laughs> the <old man. laughs> it's so true though and this what you've created here is something full of classic writing and I really, really, really um, am impressed. And I don't mind saying that because it's the truth. Everyone thinks I'm just um, being a fanboy, but I'm not. It's awesome. I want people to listen no, to it and put in the comments what you, what you think about it. But now what I'd like to do is move on because these things always, we always go off on, on things on these videos. But I love it. I think there's some really cool stuff here. Yeah. But I do want to do a Q&A. Let's get some questions. Yeah, I want to do a Q&A section. Whether it's about Tom, whether it's about his recording techniques, his writing, or live performance, and I've got a couple myself. So do ask in the chat if you've got any um, any questions. Or, or TC Helicon, you know, I mean, you can talk about gear if you want. I'm I'm surprised nobody said, yeah, yeah, whatever the EP. Where's Voice Live Four? <laughs> do you do you want to give um uh, do you want to give a, a little update to people that don't know what's been going on? Um, sort of in your own words. 
um, I don't work for TC Helicon anymore. Um, it's too bad. I miss it. I miss my good friends that I developed products with. Um, and that's the end of that. And, you know, but I'll still keep using the products mm. and, um, you know, look forward to seeing what, what the next one is going to be and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, well, we got that out of the way. I mean, I could I go on a whole rant about how I love the products and no one else makes products for singers like TC Helicon do. But, you know, it's good that you're still a fan and you're still using... It's great that you were a part of that. And I do hope they... Do, they just made an announcement they're doing something with Sweetwater and Tome, and I do hope they make more products for musicians in the future. I hope maybe, Tom, Absolutely. you can do something else. and you know, maybe, maybe you can work with another, another company in the future to do more because... No one makes no one makes pedals for acoustic guitarists and singers. They're all for the shredders. And as much as as much fun as that stuff is, I don't get it. But maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm in the minority with that stuff. I don't know. But yeah, everyone everyone knows that's how I feel about that about pedals for acoustic players. So we'll see. Exactly. I, I I'm a zealot for that kind of stuff. There are so many things I want to build, mm. and I'm not going to give you the ideas. But <laughs> um, there are so many things I want to build for giggers that yeah. would help our life, that would make us sound better to the customers, you know, the customers in the, whoever you're playing for, the fans. Yeah. Um, and, you know, attractive, sexy products. Ah, I really want to do that. But at the same time, uh, you know, I haven't been working and I've been putting out EPs and making videos and walking the dog and riding a bike and hanging out. And I mm. really, that's a kind of a neat thing yeah. to do too. Like like many of you, I'm sure, you know, there's no gigs. There's, you don't have to, you don't have to rehearse. So you can do the things you really love doing, and um, and that kind of hang out. It's good to have a it's good to have a break, but we also have to work and make money as well, of course. So, what, what do you what do you think you'll do? Have you got any thoughts about what you'll do next? Like, are you are you going to move in another direction? Are you going to try to get back into the industry in a similar role to what you had, or what do you think? It's not up to me to get back into the industry. It's up to the industry to um, answer my letters. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I'm in contact with a couple of people in, in really cool companies mm. and they know who I am and they know mm. I love this stuff and I've got lots of ideas left and I can tell the difference in sounds. You know, that's mainly one of the things I can do is I can A and B something and tell you what's wrong with B, even though to most people they can't hear a difference. Um, so it's, it's up to that. And I'd mm. love to do that on maybe, um, you know, like a, a a contractor basis where, oh yeah, can you come in for three months and help us finalize this thing? And then maybe we'll call you back six months later and you can do this thing. Mm. So that's the industry. But uh, for now, I'm going to, I'm going to play and sing and hang out. You know, I, yeah. I really love this. It's been my whole lifetime, you know, as, as musicians, people who are full-time musicians, their day is a lot less structured than mine has been over my career. I've been in I've been in MI since uh, I started with Anatech Micro Circuits in Vancouver in 1981 or two. I think I can't remember. Around oh. when the DX7 came in, I started in musical instrument industry back then. So I've been working a day job for a. <laughs> A long, long time, and there were there were times when I was sitting there at my desk, going, "Man, I wish I was just at home playing my guitar, or playing a gig or oh, something." Man. But the balance. Yeah, but at the is, same time, I'd gig at night. The balance uh, so, is so but, hard. So that's why I'm enjoying this this time. Yeah. Off. No, it's, it's like I said, it's great to have that time to get back to basics and just make music, of course. But yeah. music and business have to go together. So that's yes. the thing. Yes. Um, and Warren said he remembers you from back in those days, but not not in a very complimentary way. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Did you, did you see what he said? I did put it on the screen. Um, um, had no questions. Okay, I've got a question for you because we have very similar tastes. I'm really fascinated because there's so many talks now about is Kemper better than Helix? Is Helix better than Kemper? All these things about plug-in. There's a new plug-in every week, and you said you're using analog. So that blew my mind because, like I said, you're using the loops and the voice live. And then you're recording with analog. That makes a lot of sense, though. And people do say it sounds, you know, the digital stuff still isn't there yet. Um, 
What do you do? Here's my question for you regarding the strat. Because I have a strat with, with a noiseless um, kind of dummy coil in there, which is amazing because I can use those old pickups and not get a load of hum. Are you a fan? Of, what pickups do you use in your strats? Are you a fan of noiseless? And what do you feel about that cycle hum? Do you live with it or do you try to get rid of it? That's my question. Uh, first of all, I don't really get it very much. I don't, I don't get problems with hum. Because my pickups are not noiseless. My pickups are a, basically a Frankenstein mix. I've got a humbucker split oh. for the, you know, bridge, and then I've got a Seymour Duncan quarter pounder just because it just I just happen to have it kicking around in my my closet, and I've got a another Seymour Duncan. I think it's an El Nico in the uh, neck position. I'm not. That's one thing. I, I'm not super fussy about my sound maybe that's why i'm i'm not up there with john Mayer, but i'm more about what does the what does the audience want they want a guy running around the stage playing fast notes they don't care about whether i've got el nico or or texas specials or, mm. or noiseless they don't care about that so but um yeah so my strat's just a it's a franken strat it's an it's a wayne's world 2 commemorative edition mm. <laughs> Well, HSS, the humbucker kind of kills a lot. On, on that, if you have HSS, you have a noiseless humbucker, a noiseless two, a noiseless But only in humbucking four. mode. Only yep. in humbucking but mode. But the only ones that will give you noise with a humbucker strap, if it's wired up the way mine is, will, will be the neck and the middle. So that's not too bad anyway. I was talking about the classic oh, old style. The neck and the middle. I've got the, I've got the when I go to the in-between pickup yeah. positions on my strat, um, it goes to all the single coils. And yeah, so my, my, my two up front are, you know, quack, quack one and mm. two back here are quack, quack two. <laughs> and then when I go to this guy, I've got a, one of my tone knobs alternates between a serial series and parallel or, or, or single coil and a humbucker. So okay. I can go halfway between if I need, but I tell you what, I play it like a strat all the time. I hardly uh. ever use the, the humbucker mm. cause I, you know. The neck pickup is where the is where the money is. Yeah, no, I I, I, totally I, I agree. I play on the neck all yeah. the time. Yeah, all exclusively. Yeah, and it sounds. I love it. I love it. Quack quack, but but yeah. Here, let's get back to your 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 assertion about the digital. It's not that I find digital sounds bad. It's not that, or the latency bugs me any. I mean, like Helix has got the latency down. Like I think it's sub millisecond or something. Mm. Um, it's not about that. It's about just. You know, you, when you fire up an amp, it smells like an amp. <laughs> I you noticed know? that with mine. It stinks. It's, oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. Have you played a Hammond? It gets so hot. My amp gets so well, yeah, hot. it gets hot. I'm nuts. It, it, it smells funny, and it sounds different when you from when you started it up to like an hour later. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It is a thing, and it is, it's like humans. Yeah. I, I like it because it's, it's organic, you know? Yeah. I... I if somebody were to give me a Helix, like we had a Helix over at TC Helicon and it was in my office more often than not. And I really enjoyed it. And there was times when I went, oh my God, that is great. Why did you have a Helix there? Uh, just to, you know, observe um, oh. great guitar sounds. Oh. Because, you, you know, obviously we did our own modeling in right. Voice Live 3. Uh, and our modeling technology was nowhere near... You know, what it gets a it gets a really bad on online. It gets a really bad rap. Everyone, no one likes the amp modeling in the voice live. What what are your thoughts on that? Can, can you make them sound <laughs> like really good or? Well, that's a that's a direct plunge into my heart because we <laughs> we tried the we tried the best we could. You know, I made most of those models, oh. and our 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 technology. Like I say, we we were we didn't have impulse response speakers, which makes mm. oh, up huge difference yeah yeah um and uh but but what we did was we went okay it's pretty good if you can put up with it um for your guitar sound and and we gave you a million parameters more than you probably wanted to adjust but but hey that and the vocal stuff oh and the looping oh yeah. and an aux in yeah in one thing that's a yeah. little bit bigger than a foot by yeah. you know a foot by eight inches or whatever it's like oh okay that starts to get in there you know if we'd have had helix level guitar 
in there, we would have sold twice. We would have sold twice as many. I sounded like but, a joke. You know, I sounded like a joke there. Look, that pedal was developed years ago. Uh, it's still amazing to this day because it has the other stuff. The Helix, they're start with 3.0. They're starting to put other stuff in Helix, but the, yeah. the Voice Live 3 just does so much more than Helix. With a, I imagine quite a, a, a the processor must have much less power. I, mean, I can I can power that thing off a battery, so a rechargeable battery. So it must it doesn't use much power. It's small. It's light. It's 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 amazing. And just I just want to say something. We went on a cruise last year. And we walked in, we got on the ship and we walked in and there was a, that said on the, on the, on the listings, it said there was a guitarist, a Canadian guitarist. You might know him, Dave McHugh. You probably don't know him, but he's awesome. He's a singer songwriter as well. He was doing the cruise. I said, I said to my wife, let's go and check him out. So we, we, we got a drink and we sat down and he starts playing with backing tracks. And I said, yeah, he's good. Cause I like him. This is the interesting thing with live performance, right? I like him. I like the songs he's playing. And he sat, the guitar was fine. There was no, I had no issue with it. I thought, so I, I thought, I wonder what he's using. And as someone that reviews like Kemper and Helix and that stuff on my channel, I should really know, right? But I just enjoyed the whole performance. And when I went to see what he was using, he was using the Voice Live 3. So there is the proof. For his you know, guitar I, sound? Yeah, I sound like a, a complete snob there by being like, well, the modeling's not as good as it. And, and of course it isn't. But it was good enough. I just want to throw that in. Just, to, just to, I think people should know that it, that stuff can be good enough for a performance. But yeah, the great thing That's with that exactly product is we... it does all the other stuff. And of course, now things have moved on. You know, I just saw we have a comment here from David. Hi, David. It says the Axe FX three is pretty good. I mean, that is kind of the gold standard right now. They just made an announcement. Fractal that made the Axe FX three just made an announcement. They've got new modeling coming, and the. I mean, the first thing I think is, well, you are kind of the top level anyway, and you're always saying how great your modeling is. And now you're releasing a statement saying you've updated all your models. They sound even more real. And <laughs> some guitarist said that last year on stage. He said that like, every year they make a new modeler and they say, this sounds like a tube amp. And then five years later, <laughs> here's the new one. This sounds like a tube amp. It's like it never, it never will be like a real thing with it but it is it's, it is very impressive well, it, it, though as long as your as long as your guitar is coming out of a woofer and a tweeter it's going to sound a little funny and yeah, and that, that interesting well. there that note from David Dave Pibus he's a guy I went to school with in Texas mm. and um he's one of my covid collaborators and he plays all the guitar on our stuff through Axe Effects I play drums and bass and he plays guitar, and it's like, I'm just like, man, it sounds great. Yeah. Such killer guitar sounds. And, you know, yeah. I don't know. I think the digital, I think the digital world is, is where we're going to go. I mean, who can, who can haul an amp every time? I think Although, if you. I'd like to see, I'd like to see, like, I've got this little Fender Champion 50. Mm. And, it's the precursor, I think, to the the digital uh, re deluxe reverb. It sounds unbelievable. It's just huh. not too loud, not loud enough for a stage. But it's a whole thing. It's like a modeler with a speaker, and it's got yeah. a handle, and you take it to a gig, and you put it down on the floor, and you play, and it's a yeah. full thing rather than going, okay, I've got my modeler. What kind of monitors are you guys using? Well, we're using this kind of monitor, and you yeah. plug into the mains and everything, sounds and you get different. it. And it's like. Ugh, okay, well, I'm going to mess with the top end, mess with the bottom end because the monitor sounds funny and I don't feel right playing. Um, I like the idea of that, a thing yeah. you carry, an amp. Yeah. You know, yeah. kind of like the Axe FX, the original Line 6, the very, what was it? Not Axe FX, what was it called? The AX6 or something, AX12. It was an amp that was a modeler. The thing is, if yeah, you only yeah. use clean and crunch, do you need that? Like, why not just take an amp with two channels or an amp and a pedal? That's, how, that's what I always say. But, you know, the, the, the thing is, right, you obviously live, you don't have neighbors. Like, if you live in an apartment like me, I, once I turn my amp up to a certain level, I'm going to annoy the neighbors. So I have to then plug into, I just, I just did a review of the Captor X. I have to plug into that, use headphones, in-ears. It, it's fine. It's good enough. But the if you live in a house, why wouldn't you just mic the amp? Of course, my real mic is always. Of course, the real thing is always going to be better if you can use it. Always use the real thing. That's 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 how I feel about it anyway. Do you know Alec Bourne? He's from the MIDI Mad Scientist Club on Facebook. They do a lot oh, cool. with they do a lot with MIDI, and he's one of the 
<laughs> reasons I, I dove into MIDI so much in the past. Yeah. And I was trying to set up, oh, I've got a rig here that I've set up with a MIDI controller and different pedals. So I basically made my own Voice Live 3. I used a MIDI controller from, from Morningstar. I got the Voice Live Touch because it had full MIDI. I used the HX yep. Stomp because it's got really great amps and effects, you know, well, a step above the, the Voice Live 3. Um, and then the Boss Looper. And I sort of made my own Voice Live 3, but it was only mono, really hard to make it in stereo and and... You know, it was a lot of work to wire it up and program it. Again, yeah. Voice Live 3, all in one. And where it might lack in one thing, it's got a million other things where something like an Axe FX is just that one thing. So it, it, darn, yeah. well, it darn well should be good at that because that's all it it's does. It's the comprehensive effect that's so nice. Yeah. You've got yeah. everything in the one. And, you know, that I think that, that sp still speaks for it. You know, there is, there is opportunity in, in the musical instrument industry. And I'll say it here and now. <laughs> For a voice live three with better guitar tones, a few more tracks in the looper, oh. a little easier user interface. It's th this isn't rocket science. I'm not saying anything that nobody knows, but hey, uh, anybody, I'll help you develop it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'll, I'll jump in with you. I mean, I've got so many ideas. Exactly. No, we're we're building a we're building a. Uh, a group here that's gonna that wants this thing, and and if you show manufacturers that there's money at the end of that, um, they'll go, oh, okay, they'll listen up. Oh, well, here's the thing, right? You've worked it. You've you're, you're the ideal person for me to talk to about this, and I know you can't tell us everything, but you've worked in the industry in this industry, so I've got to ask you, is yeah. that you? You must have done the research. Is there a market for this? Like I sit on here all the time ranting about this stuff that we're talking about right now. So what, what the thing is, is there really a market for it? Like, is, is it worth, I, I did say to another company at NAMM one year, why don't you do something like the Voice Live 3? They said, there's no market for that stuff. Is there a market for that or not? That's, that's, that's what I need that to know was, this. The, there was enough market to support TC Helicon all these years. Um, mm. So, and, and what they probably figured was, as soon as you talk about vocals to some like manufacturers or some people who aren't zealots like we are, like you and I are, Aaron. Like mm. we're players. We love this stuff. It makes us sound better. And unless you're that person, they don't get it. And I think there is a market. Uh, we've done research. We had a we have a group of people who were we took polls, and you know we got thousands of people responding to polls, and we got all their opinions. And um, you know you can only you can only parse a few of those features requests that are sort of common but of course yes there is i i'd say wholeheartedly there is um <laughs> and in fact w one of the quips is while i was still with tc helicon i was you know i chat with the people who are managing the social media channels and you know they'd put a posting saying hey we've got to do this or here's a person uh showing this product or you know something like that and inevitably the comments would come back saying yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, where's Voice Live 4? And Voice Live 4 is essentially what we're talking about here, which is Voice Live 3 with the, you know, the upgraded guitar and UI and everything like that. Um, there are enough people out there. So, I don't know. At the end of the day, there is a certain amount of crapshoot, you know. And and the reason we were very lucky, and, and customers are very lucky too, because we were a group of zealots who played on the side and we had a head of a, the company who was behind us mm -hmm. and he said well you guys you're doing well you're selling selling products and you're making these crazy things that we don't think there's you know we're not like the the people at the top they were going ah eh, whatever vocal thing yeah it looks good makes good numbers but i don't get it yeah um so we were crazy enough to develop the stuff we wanted to create Mm. And what you get is voice like three. You mm. get this wonderful thing that does all these cool things that a company that's sitting there, you know, run by the accounting department or something is going to say, no, no, I don't get it. It's like, it's like when you're, you're at the NAMM show and you, you talk to somebody in the aisles and they're like, uh, so what do you do? And I go, well, I work for TC Helicon and we make these things that do harmony in your voice and it's a pedal and it makes, it sounds and you talk about vocals and harmony and things like that, and they go, they're nodding away. <laughs> and then you take them over to the booth and you do a demo for them and you do a harmony. You go, 
Take it easy. Uh, 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 harmony. Yeah, they just go. Tom, no, no eagle songs will get taken down completely. Um, oh, yeah. Take this, it okay. <laughs> take it fairly well. Um, <laughs> no, actually, in all seriousness, Rick Beardo, who's amazing, has like two million subscribers, does amazing content. He just got a strike. If he gets three of those strikes, they take his channel down. Because he promoted the Cars song. He told he, he did a video about why the song is great. And he's had a strike. If he gets three of those strikes, they take his whole channel away. All his work, gone. The music industry is in a really weird place with that copyright stuff right yeah. now. I don't get it. That's another topic. But, uh, but Michael yeah, the Fulton, companies have too much power and they're... Um, it's just weird. They're too, they're too dark about it. There's nothing you can do about it. If Like eBay... They said, "Oh no, you're stricken. You can't. You can't be here." And I'm like, "Yeah, what? What did I? What, what did I do?" And they said, "We're not telling. Mm. You can't have an account." Yeah. And I'm going, "Well, you know, I'm just going to go and change my email address." And they yeah. said, well, no, we'll follow that too. I'm like, "Wow, I'm a criminal, and I didn't even know what I did." <laughs> you feel like right? if you, you feel like you've done something terrible. The fact is that yeah. video he made for the cars. He was he, he wasn't saying this is a bad song. He was saying this is a great song. This is why it's a great song. And he doesn't mind all the money going to their label. They would have made thousands of dollars from that video, but then they they repay him by saying, "We're striking your account, and you might lose." Your... Anyway, that's another topic. But yeah, um, let's not go down that pipe. Michael Folsom is here. Hello, Michael. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you, my friend. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could talk about this this um, performance stuff for hours. But Tom, in all in all your time performing, what do you think is the most important thing to a successful? solo acoustic performance um being cognizant of what your audience wants to hear at that moment mm. it, it's it's more about that um gear wise gear doesn't make all that much difference um it's more about the songs the repertoire whether you're singing you're believable in what you're singing and you're kind of in tune that helps um but that that's what i find them the and that's what i've learned of late because i've i've had a i've had a, a steady gig at places around here just doing my solo and i'm agonizing over the details and making sure it sounds fantastic and i know it does out front you know my bow stick and everything but on some nights man i am not connecting <laughs> mm. yeah. And it's like soul crushing. It's like people, I can't play any better. I can't sing any better. But if I do some, but if I play that one cheesy song that I feel that, you know, it's kind of cheesy. It's a throwaway. I play it and they love it. Yeah. And I'm going, yeah, but this John Mayer tune I'm doing, doesn't it sound better and fuller and more interesting? Yeah. Nah. You know, they turn to their glass of wine, but I think it's more about that. It's more about the organic stuff. Um, you don't have to sound full. If if you have a believable persona and you're just there with an acoustic guitar and you're not sounding spiky, like if you're not your PA is not honky at 2K or 3K or something like that, then uh, you know you'll do fine. You'll you can do better than a guy like me or you who agonized over our gear we got everything oh we got sysx programmed we, we're we're <laughs> you know we're dialed baby but yeah. if, if i know they don't know. like the look of you or they don't feel that yeah. you're something or yeah. something then yeah. it's you just self or not hang on yeah. i gotta plug my laptop in because it's starting to i i unplugged <laughs> it because the battery it runs plug, plug in before we lose you no i i get it i i, I always say you know the, the, the tone for me is for me. I know the audience doesn't care, and I've done a lot of research on that. I did one the other week. I was playing my, my Martin, which has a Fishman piezo, and um, someone said, can we, can we hear that? And I turned off the impulse response, and it's just that basic under saddle sound. No one had a problem with it. They said, yeah, sounds great. I'm like, okay. I, like I, I, guitar. It doesn't inspire me. But that, that for, for me, all this tone stuff is for me. I could have saved a lot of money. I could have just bought a... Takamini and a play acoustic and a Bose stick and never bought anything else in my whole life and just done gigs with that and never cared. I went on that that rabbit hole, that adventure of the gear thing. That's why I tried to turn it into a channel to get some back from that and, and to talk about it in a, in a way I can document it. 
But I do know that stuff doesn't really matter. What matters is the song, the performance, all that other stuff is so much more important. But I personally find, like when I used the mic the other week, I felt so sucked into the performance from that that sound. It just really... Right. And I get it from a real amp as well. I just, I just feel like... The gear helps you get involved. Yes. So you put that energy out into the audience and they go, wow, he's digging it. And it also makes yeah. you want to gig there again next week. Yeah. <laughs> there was one thing here. Uh, I, I saw a note. Remembering the lyrics. Yeah. 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 I, I'm a bit of a cheese ball. I've got a... I've got my... Here, I don't know if you can see that. I've got a I'm little sorry. holder that holds my phone. Me too, me too. And I try to not make it super obvious. Yeah. But there's... And and I this. do work really hard on remembering my lyrics. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you got an iPhone 12 too. Nice. Um, I, I try to... I try to memorize my lyrics as much as I can. I want to look forward at my audience. I even hate looking down and, you know, pushing foot switches and stuff, which I have to do from time to time. But, um, yeah, lyrics lyrics are pretty important. That's, that's a good one, especially if you're singing The Gambler or something and you get the lines mixed up, you know. I And, yes, I do The Gambler. I you, love that song. I, I, I know you, you were about to burst into that song and you thought, I'm not going to do it because Aaron will tell me off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I could feel that it. is so pathetic. That is so wrong. <laughs> um, no, I, I get it. I use I started using on song myself, and I started having the phone like this, and someone told me, so I moved it down like this. And yeah, I ne you know when I started playing, I just had a guitar and a PA, and and I memorized my lyrics. And now I'll use yeah. apps and things. And yeah, I don't know. It, it's it, it's cool. I noticed today you the didn't use any. Is no wiser. But you didn't use any any um, harmonies today from the pedal. Are you are you anti harmonies from the pedal? Or? Um, I felt bad enough just using pre recorded loops. Oh, okay. I didn't. I I saw that John Mayer thing at Nam, and right. I went, "Wow, you yeah. really can captivate, right? With just you, right?" So I I decided I didn't want to do the harmonies. Right. A any other time I'd use them, but. No, I, I wanted it to be just me. And and maybe it didn't sound as full. I don't know. I don't know. Are we boring people? Should we get on with it? No, we've got we've got more viewers than we had at the start. I um <laughs> I struggle with this. I'm like, now I'm streaming. Should I just use a mic and just play acoustic and just sing? Or should I keep using my voice live three and that and using the loops and I, I keep going back and forth. I don't know. But like you said, Contrast. once you go on the stage again. Then I mean, or maybe the thing is to do Wednesday fully acoustic, and then Sunday or Saturday night use the tracks. Maybe mix it up like that. Do both. I don't know. No, I'd, I'd say mix it up per night. Mm. Like that's that's another thing I was going to say about uh, performing. Contrast is what gets your audience paying attention to you. Right, right. So if you're doing if you're doing harmonies and loops all night, yeah, you're the guy that's using harmonies and loops all night, and it's a it's a monotone. Um. But if in one song it's just you with an acoustic guitar, like I play uh, your song by Elton John, I play yeah. way high capo up. It's a little bit, you know, I don't want to sing it. <laughs> Cut off. Um, but then right after that, I do one of my production numbers, which has solos and bips and boops and drum ideas and drums and sounds like a, a freaking band with harmonies. Like I do Walking in Memphis, you know, the whole bit at the end. Walking in Memphis. You know, I do that whole thing with... Uh, harmonies that are looped and then I do ad libs over top of that and it's like this production number and then you do something stripped down after that and and then your audience sort of goes wow you're they're riding the peaks and dips which uh, gets them to enjoy yeah. and also <laughs> here's another one this is kind of funny when you're playing uh, and you and you're not sure you're connecting right because mm. for me, connecting is everything. I don't want to be there if I'm not connecting. If people are ignoring me and their and their wine and their phone are more important than me, man, I don't want to be there. Really, <laughs> sorry. Um, but <laughs> you sound like someone I, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's soul killing. I don't want to go home from a gig going, man. Yeah. Do I suck, or did my was my sound bad? Was I too quiet? Like if you're loud. They can't help but pay attention to you. Anyway, what I, where I was going with that was, if watch your audience butts in the seats, because they may there's four people over the table over there and three people over there, and they're all talking to one another because at least at this one place I was playing, it was more about the lounge than it was about 
ladies and gentlemen, Tom Lang, you know, and, <laughs> but I'd know while I'm playing it, and I do this really percussive kind of thing mm. with the bass line and everything. And I can see their butts going, kink, 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 kink. <laughs> and I'm going, okay, I'm connecting. Yay. I, you know, keep doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, totally. You've, yeah, you're right. Contrast. And the, the loops is an obvious way to contrast, right? Sonny do a song with a loop, but even just doing something a bit quirk. I used to do an acoustic version of um, Baby Got Back, and it just like people's ears would just like lift up, and they would, it would dra dra draw them in. But I always got compliments on the harmonies. It was always like, wow, where are those harmonies coming from? I'm a, it was always, hey, I'm a singer too, and uh, I heard those harmonies. Are they coming from your phone? Because I saw the phone well, on the Did you pre-record those? Yeah. You know, that's what they think. All right, Tom, can I put you on the spot? Sure. So Warren is a Warren loves the blues. Could you could you jam some improvised blues for us? Um yeah, it'll have to be improvised, but the thing is YouTube's gonna find it because it's a one four five change. <laughs> no, it went no, it's fine. Wait a minute. It's fine. You can't use that one four five and, change. That's and, been and, used hundred and fifty million times elsewhere. And in case people are not familiar with the harmony feature, can you give us a little, a, quick, a very quick overview of what those harmonies sound like? Uh, okay. I'll give you the stage. Here we go. Oh, hang on. Uh, do I have harmonies? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is my guitar plugged in? Turned on. Oh, there, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> This, this one's for Warren. Holy cow, that was awesome. That was amazing. Yeah, the, the little guys over here that are, laugh, are clapping. I love the walking bass yeah. too. Wow, wow. Amazing. But I, I do that whole thing with like, uh, I, I do, uh, uh, you know how you were talking about earlier about the way you prepare mm. the, the riff uh, while you're playing it. Like, so I do like here, let me go to another loop here. Uh, sure. Oh yeah, don't do that. No, stop! Don't do the metronome! <laughs> the That's the worst thing when you leave the harmonies on and you say, thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> the yeah. third above Thank you well. very much, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst ever. And it never goes away and you will never get it perfect all night. Just, just, just for you people who feel bad about, oh gosh, I did it again last night. <laughs> I've been playing with harmonies for like a hundred years and I still do it. Okay, so I'd like, uh, let's clear that whole thing. Metronome is off. Yeah, so, so like, uh, live now and when I want to take a solo I go to the other part yeah Oh, 
awesome. Anyway, really awesome. You get the idea. Very slick. It's almost like you did that for a living sometime before. <laughs> in a past life, in a pre-COVID life, I did. <laughs> it's a shame. It's a shame, Tom. I think if people saw, and this, this, this is saying really arrogant of me, but I'm going to say it anyway. I, I just had a thought, like if people saw this, what you can do with this pedal in this kind of context and the way we're talking about how it can enhance the performance, I, I think people would be really interested. I think like some people don't don't think about it in this way, like the way you're doing that and so seamless and it just sounds so interesting. And I just don't, I don't think people are aware. You know, I, I think a stream like this where you talk about it and, and sh show people stuff, I just think it would be, it would be a great thing. Anyway, let's see if we've got I'd any like questions. I'd like to do that. Well, we can if I you want. Still do that we, while, we can, while we're looking, while we're waiting for a question to come through. I was about um, to suggest a monthly live stream where we just talk about a specific area of performance, and we just discuss, you know, problems and well, you successes we've had, and just do like a live performance um, um, hangout and just just show stuff and try stuff, and that could be a cool thing. I if there we... are people that want to watch that, I'm I'm down for that. Big yeah. Time. Well, I I I I don't know. I I always feel like it's only me. And our friends here today that care about this stuff. But I think from looking at the numbers of people on online that do like this stuff, and like you said, people always there are people like the, the this new quad cortex thing, right? It models your amp, it it profiles your amp. It's small and compact. It has an XLR in. A lot of musicians are saying, like, does it have harmonize harmonizer? Does it work with cello? Does it work with? It's not all about the shredders. There is a market for this other stuff, but the companies are just so focused. I think I, I had Yamaha on here. Uh, he's, um, the, the, the CEO is a good friend of mine. And he, I basically said to him outright on the stream, like, are you going to make any more Variax acoustics and these kind of things? And he basically said, look, we're focused on the electric guitar market. I mean, damn, the Variax acoustic was so ahead of its time. We're talking about like 2013, TC Helicon. Line six, Variax acoustic. This was like I feel like we've gone back in time in twenty twenty one. Yeah, you know. Well, it's I it's, don't know. It's, it's about the bigger market. They're just they're looking at the pyramid, right? And they're going, well, okay. There's the air is rarefied up at the top there for those really all those crazy things like Variaxes and voice lives and stuff. But at the bottom, look at the size of that market. Yeah, yeah that's another uh, a guitar that's shaped like a V that goes shug 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 which i mean i'm super impressed with that the sound and the and the playing that those guys can do but you're right that that's not all there is anyway but if but if you want to do a a, a chat about um either gigging or voice life three on an ongoing basis let me know i think we should if you're up for it <laughs> I, that's completely I'm off free. the cuff everyone i'm just um that's completely off the cuff but I think it'd be cool to do something for like, I can't think what to word it, but like, um, you know, just like performance talk and just talk about our experiences and your experiences yeah. and, and demo different things and focus on one thing. I always say that on these chats, we, we try to cover everything, but it's nice to then do a follow up where we just talk about one thing. So that, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. Let's get back to the music because we've, like I said, we've gone way over what we were going to do, but we do have more people watching now than the beginning. But I will ask you, please do send this to your friends or at least send them this link, Tom Lang Music, and ask them to listen to Well Trained Mind because I think it's awesome and I want you to tell your friends about it. So why don't we play another song and then everyone watching, if you've got a question, I think I've asked my question. So if you're watching and you have a question we haven't asked, now is the time to put it because we're going to end pretty soon unless we get more questions. So if you've got a question you want to ask, ask it now. We'll have Tom play a song, and when we come back, um, we'll answer any final questions, and we'll start to wrap it up. I think that sounds good. It's funny. It sounds like a threat. <laughs> if you don't give us any more questions, Tom's going to start playing guitar. <laughs> then you're really going to be sorry. Um, uh, okay, so apologies for the... Well, actually, I'm going to try and unplug the laptop just for this song, okay? Because okay. The, the guitar is humming just a little bit. Because it doesn't know the words. <laughs> oh, hang on. Whenever I have a USB thing plugged into the computer, there's always a ground hum. Okay, let's see if the battery is in my laptop is sufficiently charged for me to do a song. Um. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is a Sad Little Rich Boy. And points for who can tell me who this song is about. Mm. 
And yes, I'm using a loop, a pre-prepared loop. And oh, like <laughs> hang on, I've got to stop you right there. Hang on, hang what? on. <laughs> Check it out. We finally got the question. <laughs> what? Uh, no. Sorry, Fled. Not we sure if it was asked before. I'm the guy who asked for the first. <laughs> No, sorry, Fled. We Aaron, were we, was we were right? was I right? We, we were laughing yesterday in the stream in our production pre-production. Like, oh, um, we're going to get this question the whole way through, and we've not had it yet. But we were we were expecting it, and I want to know the same thing. But unfortunately, I don't think Tom can. I want to know the same thing. Tom wants to know as well. So Tom is, as he said earlier, is not working for um, TC anymore. But um, yeah, if I find out anything on the channel, I will let you know. So do make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. Um, so you're notified if I do have any news for you in the future. There you go. All right. Sorry, Tom. Look I put... at that. Nice way to get a plug in there. I didn't even ask yeah. you. I didn't even ask you what that guitar smells like. Because I also have a, a a product here, the Sandhole Sniffer Mug. Because the Martin... Oh, really? The uh, Martin... I don't know. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> put that on my, I'll put that oh, on my it promo. Smells like, it smells like spruce. The, the Martin guitars have a, a wonderful smell. I'm not sure that I'm not no. sure the the Taylor's smell is good, but they do sound darn good plugged if, in. If you want to smell something wonderful, that that <laughs> go fire up my Hammond. Like you know how to fire up a Hammond, right? It's like two two switches, and it's Ooh. not it's not just turning it on. It's like it's, you know, yeah. you're starting it up, and then you let it run, and all the oil runs, and then it, the Leslie turns on, and the Leslie's you know my Leslie's from like uh, early seventies. All that stuff whirring and clunking and noisy and it why? smells like Hammond oil. Oh, why I just is that like good? Plague. Why is that a good really? thing? Like you're, you're not you're not going to write your letters tonight on a typewriter and mail them. You're going to send an email. So why is digital better for sending letters but not for recording music? What is the reason? Oh, digital is by far the best way to record music. Sorry, it's it's maybe not be the best way to. Uh, transduce the sound of a guitar into an amp oh you so Maybe you do because, like because you do you do record hmm? digitally no because oh we've got yes oh you did I, I couldn't live without it it's it's a revelation sorry oh I guess for I editing for editing but your your amps are for analog editing. but you edit in digital okay so you combine yep. the two which i think is a great way to do full it. full disclosure i am a wicked editor you're not uh, edit, you're not no. recording to tape machines over there in Canada. No. Okay. No. That's I'm, those I'm days are gone. Baby. I'm disappointed. They're done. <laughs> all right. All um, right. <laughs> so sad little rich boy, take it yep. away. There's a sad little rich boy living in town. In a big chair, mom and daddy not around He never knew love, so he wants it every day I said, little rich boy, are gonna throw the world away Don't you cry, my little one, my daddy's gonna make it right He'll teach you how to fight and change worlds overnight People gotta work together Changing their hearts and minds Focusing sunlight on the darkness down inside A sad little rich boy Sad little rich boy See him sitting in a sandbox Playing all alone Building castles to himself But they never make a home That sad little rich boy So misunderstood Broken little man toy And is up to no good Don't you cry my little one your daddy's gonna make it right He'll teach you how to fight and change worlds overnight People gotta work together Changing them hearts and minds Focus 
in sunlight on the darkness down inside. Sad little rich boy. Sad little rich boy. Sad little rich boy living in town, sitting in a big chair. Mom and daddy not around. He never knew love, so he wants it every day. That sad little rich boy gonna throw the world away, away, away. People gotta work together. Fight that sad little rich boy. People gotta work together. Changing them hearts and minds. People, let's work together. Fight that sad little rich boy. People gotta work together. Changing them hearts and minds. Thank you. Uh, we need the we need the the bouquet of roses to come up. Here, you know? <laughs> well, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty. I mean, pretty darn obvious who that song was written about. And I have to say, I'm pretty offended. You wrote a song about me, Tom. <laughs> yeah, really. Aaron. Sure. Oh, my God. Nuts. <laughs> Woo. No politics on my on my channel. Um, yeah, no, and, and awesome. I don't really want to play politics because there may be some people who, you know, think differently than I do. I didn't How even think. I didn't even think about that until you said that. But anyway, yep. my goodness, what a great stream this has been. Um, that was fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna just say one more time. Um, we want to give a shout out here to um, the Gene Hardy who played on your on your title track. A great musician. And I encourage people to go away from this and just listen to the EP because it's one of those things, Tom, where we've basically sat here and talked about the music. And the, the best thing for people to do is just to go and listen to the music on, on Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, um, and, and just hear it as it should be heard, right? That's the whole point. Yeah, and, 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 and share it with your friends. Like if, if you think somebody might, else might like it, do that. Subscribe. I've got a Facebook musician page. Um, you can subscribe to that and you know, I've, like I said, I'm doing uh, videos of my old tunes and stuff like that with my COVID collaborators around North America and hopefully the world eventually. So yeah, do that and please enjoy it and contact Aaron or me if you like it. If you don't, keep it to yourself, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say on here. Give me, a, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like the video. And give me a thumbs up on this video if you didn't like the video. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There you go. Well, this has been a heck of a lot of fun. And thank you, Aaron, for oh, um, thank you. allowing us to do this. Thank you to the fans that have, have joined up and, and um, all that kind of stuff. I hope everybody's staying safe and nobody's lost their mind yet um, with the, the whole COVID thing. And, you know, get out and go for a run, ride your bike, Yeah, you know. Things are Thank things are getting dog. better. That's 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 a great yeah, title for your I'm next right. song. Things are, things are getting better. Um, yeah. No, look, Tom, this has been awesome. Honestly, I love the music. I'm going to play it again tonight. I'm I'm a big fan. Um, I loved. I also love what you did off the cuff today with the with the blues thing and that. That was really cool, really inspiring, really awesome. Um, let's talk. Let's talk about doing something else. Um, I really wanted to get um, in some of the Facebook groups. We couldn't stream there today, but maybe we can in the future. And if you're interested in us doing something like that, please let us know in the comments below. Um, and the best way that you can help us is to tell your friends. So if you tell your friends about yeah. Tom's EP and ask them, you know, post it on your social media. And same with me. If you post a link to my channel on your social media and ask your friends to check out my Sunday performances, 
that's a really big help for all of us. We just, you know, obviously getting the exposure out there is the biggest thing. So if you can share this video, we'd really appreciate it. And um, yes, yeah, Tom, it's been, a, well, I've really enjoyed it. I hope the viewers got something out of it as well. Um, again, I encourage them to listen to the to the EP and I'd love to do something with you in the, with, with you in the future because you're a wealth of information and a very talented performer. So um, let's do something again soon. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Have fun. We'll talk to you again soon. Yep. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, Tom. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>